So uh, today, we are continuing our systematic approach of working through 1 John. Our plan for this year is 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and then we'll see where the Lord takes us from there. Um, last week, we saw in uh, the verses, what did we do, 3, 4, and 5, 6, last, year, last week, or is it? Nope. 5, 6, and 7. Uh, we saw last week that God is light, and that is life. That light came into darkness, he redeemed us by his precious blood, and now we walk in step with light, which leads us and guides us. It gives us true fellowship with God and each other. So that was last week, and now we're going to look at the next three verses uh, that finishes out chapter 1. And I'm just going to read those all to you, and then we're going to look at them individually. First uh, John 1 John 1.8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So let's go ahead and start looking at what John is trying to tell us in these verses. Now remember, he's writing this letter because he's um, coming up against heresy. There, There's a heresy that has arisen uh, late in that first century that Maybe, you know, we aren't, we aren't so bad. Uh, you know, our, we can work out this, uh, this uh, God within us. This idea that our sin nature isn't so, so bad. But, and maybe, maybe, maybe Jesus wasn't really in flesh. Maybe he just, it was a spiritual body. That he came in. And, and it just gets worse and worse as the, this heresy goes on. But John is really trying to um, raise up a standard against it. In 1 John 1 8, I want us to look at this first, this first statement. If we say that we have no sin, so that's the blank in your bulletin. If we say we have no sin, uh, well, over and over, we can see in Scripture our, our state. Before grace. In, in first or in Romans 3, chapter 10. What? <laughs> Romans 3, verse 10. Okay, so now I've got to get my brain and my mouth working together. <clears throat> because my uh, mouth often works without my brain working. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a danger. You should see me at school. All right. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. Says this. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So that's the blank in your bulletin, but I'm going to keep reading. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. They've all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable. There is none that does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Their tongues they have uh, have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursings and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they no know, not known there is no fear of God before their eyes. That's our state. So to say we have no sin is just a plain lie. I don't care what you convince yourself of. Well, you know, I, at least I'm not like that. Comparing myself to some other person that has a list of sins that I deem worse than me, doesn't mean I'm without sin. And in a holy God's eyes, you 
are a sinner. So, if you don't think that um, there is evidence of a sin nature, if you don't believe that there's a, um, a manifestation of the state of our heart, I gave you six. I'm not going to read them all. I've already read you Galatians 5, 19 through 20. One, Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5, we read them last week. I just put them in there again for y'all to have them. But I am going to read a couple. First uh, Timothy 1, the reason I want to read this one is uh, kind of the end of it. First Timothy 1, 9 and 10 says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinner, for the unholy and the profane, for the murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, slavers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary, to sound doctrine. If you're anti-word, you're anti-Christ, and it is darkness. We talked about that last week. Frank, you memorized it. Was that right? First John five eight, first eight one eight. I mean, or one five. Hey, you should see me try to write and talk and think. <laughs> my kids literally will look at me and say, what? I mean, my, my hand will just write things that I'm not even thinking. But the, the, the thing is, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So if you could put a check mark by any of these, profane, uh, um, a liar, or if you've ever done anything contrary to sound doctrine, if you could put a check mark by that, you've got darkness in you. But newsflash, we all do. Okay? None of us escapes this, um, this condition. Uh, Colossians, I guess... Uh, uh, we should get the blank in your bulletin. Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 5 through 9 says, Mortify therefore your members which are uh, upon the earth. Um, some some uh, Bibles will say, uh, well, let me just read it. Uh, the New Living says this. So put to death the sinful earthly think things lurking within you have nothing to do with uh, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And I'm going to switch over to uh, um, a little, some more modern words. Uh, have nothing to do with sexual immor immorality, impurity. Lusts and evil desires, don't be greedy for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, darkness. But now it is time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off that old sinful nature. And have uh, and all its wicked deeds. That's what the blank in your bulletin. You have put off the old man with its deeds. These are the list of the old man's deeds. Deeds. Old man's deeds. What the the old man did. Now, you can put a check mark by any of those. Darkness. It's just darkness. 
And in God, there is no darkness, only light. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, I'm not going to read it, but it, on the list he says, don't be deceived. These shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you need, if you, if you're a hundred percent so far, haven't put a check by any of them yet, Pastor. Go read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. If you haven't put a check there yet, then look at Mark. Even Jesus gets in on the lists. In Mark chapter 7, Jesus says this. Mark 7, verse 21 through 23. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's darkness. That's our state. So you cannot approach the light and say, hey, light, look at me. I might be a little dim, but I'm mostly light. No, no. No. Our condition is darkness. We have sinned. If we say we have no sin, we we make God out to be a liar. Because he just told us in six, seven different places that we do. That we do sin. Okay? So... If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. The, the fact is, we all, are, we all are in a fallen state. So what do we do? Verse 9. Verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's talk about if we confess our sins. What does that mean to confess our sins? <clears throat> admit it. <laughs> that, that's what it means. It means to admit it or declare oneself guilty of what one is accused of. I, I have darkness in me. I agree, Lord. I agree that within me there is darkness. I need you to cleanse me. We have to agree with the word of God. We have to put aside the notion that, you know, at least I'm not like that person. That has nothing to do with our state with God. We as individuals must face God, a holy God, a God who is light and has no darkness at all, and say, I live darkly. I, I confess it. I admit it. I admit that you're right, I am wrong. You are holy, I am not. You are light, I am dark. I'm admitting that. I am confessing that. See, that's what happens. Look at Acts chapter 19. Acts 19. Paul ends up in Ephesus. And Paul is preaching the gospel. If you go back to verse 17, he, it'll tell you he's in Ephesus. And, and, and many and many believed... Verse 18, and, and confessed and showed their deeds. When, when they heard about God and the gospel message, they confessed and showed their deeds. What did they do? They brought out their books and started burning them. Now, I'm not talking about burning books. Um, Tom Sawyer and what some of the other ones, uh, all these, the, these are books that were, if you look in verse 19, uh, of the curious arts. These are, these are spell, 
witchcraft books. These are books that they use to worship idols and practice idolatry. Now, I'm not saying they weren't expensive, and I'm not saying they weren't um, maybe historically significant, but the point is they were darkness. And when people were confronted with the light, they confessed, they admitted, what I'm doing is wrong, and I am going to get rid of it. Even if it's pretty expensive, they said uh, a 50,000 pieces of silver. What's my little footnote? Maybe they don't have a footnote for it. But 50,000. If silver drachma is meant, the value would have been the equivalent about of, a, of about 138 years of pay for a rural worker. It's a pretty good wage, right? That that would have that would have paid somebody uh, to work for 138 years. Well, they didn't care. When they were presented the light, the the gospel message, they confessed their deeds and said, "Oh, they're awfully dark." We need to stop it. Okay? And what is the result of confessing our sin? 1 John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The title of our sermon. To forgive us and cleanse us. He is faithful to do that. Now, <clears throat> Dad Chrome, uh, no, who, who uh, quoted Romans 3.23 today? Uh, no, you did 6.23. Uh, Red, I think you did 3.23, wasn't it? <clears throat> so, I want us to go to the verses right after that, Romans 3, 24 and 25, because Red said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, or, or come uh, fall short of God's glorious standard. Depends how your Bible reads. But then in verse 24 it says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ, whom God has set to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. He cleanses us. He forgives us and cleanses us through his sacrifice, his faith in his blood. He declares us righteous. Okay? If we confess, if we admit that there... I'm dark. I, I'm, I can't do it myself. I, I need a Savior. Uh, in fact, um, this gets into uh, this verse I've seen used uh, very wrongly. And, and I'm going to give you a one-two on it. All right? Uh, the first way... I've seen it used wrong is uh, kind of the first John 13, 8 through 10. This is what, what's recorded in first John 13. Does anybody remember? Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And he gets to Peter and Peter says what? No, no. First he says, no, no, no. You aren't going to wash me. And then Jesus says, hey, if I don't wash you, you're not part of me. Oh, well, well then... If uh, that's the case, then wash me everywhere. Wash all of me. And what does Jesus say? Those who are clean don't need to be washed all over except just the feet. Okay? So this is the first way I've seen 1 John uh, 1, 9 misused. Oh, God, I, I need to get saved every week. Every week. Oh, if that's the case, wash me all over. I've got to, oh, pastor, why don't you have an altar call? Why don't you have it every week? I need to get clean. Oh, my, i got to be saved. 
Oh my, every time there's a, an emotional thing, I, I, can we have baptism every week too? Can we? Oh, I, I just need to be saved. I just need to be saved. I need to be saved. I've seen that. You guys, I've seen it. The person that has no um, uh, um, security in their salvation, they forgot to put on their helmet. Oh, that's for tonight. The thing is, I see 1 John 1, 9. Oh, I've got to confess my sins. I've got to, con- I've got to get saved. I've got to admit how horrible I am and how, how dark I am. I've got, to, I've got to have the light come into me. Dude, you don't wash your feet, but you're clean. It... it he, he, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you. Stand in that. Or how about this? Walk in it. But then I see the other side, kind of the, uh, hey, I'm forgiven. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I do. God forgives me. You know, I'm of the light. I don't I don't need to uh can't judge me. I'm forgiven. So what? Maybe I go out and have a few too many and lose myself. <laughs> I can be forgiven. Ah, you know that uh, Porn's not that bad. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? You know, can't get a girl, but it's right there on my phone. But I can, oh, wait, wait. No, I can ask for forgiveness. First John 1, 9, I just take it to the Lord. He forgives me. He's faithful and just forgive my sins. Maybe I'll just ask before I do it. I'll just build up a little uh, credit. <laughs> and then I can go out and have a good time. You know, Lord, forgive me for this weekend. Because I'm going to have fun. (laughs) That's not right. That is not right. Do you know what happens once we confess our sins and he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins? Romans 7 happens. We start struggling between the right and the wrong. At least we finally start admitting there's a struggle. Oh, you know what? This is the principle I see. Every time I want to do right, their sin is right next to me trying to make me do what's wrong. Well, you know, since it's a struggle, why struggle? Well, what's Romans 6 say? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. For how can we who are dead to sin continue any longer therein? No, we don't keep sinning because we want to. Well, you know, it's natural. (laughs) It's just who I am, man. Yeah, it is. It is who you are. Confess it. And let him cleanse you from it and create in you a new heart. See, 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16, says, uh, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. So don't act like you did when you were so uh, ignorant that what you're doing was wrong. But as he which has called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of life. Because it is written, be you holy, for I am holy. That's our goal. Are we going to be holy? Perfect. Separated? No. Not perfectly. But strive for it. Don't say, well, I'll never be that, so, you know, I might as well just live like hell. No. 
It's a struggle. It is a struggle. And we have an advocate. And we have an advocate. And he is faithful and just as forgive our, forgive our sins. Amen. But that means we struggle. I'd much rather see people struggling with sin than giving in to it. Sometimes a fine line. And only you are... <laughs> Only you can tell if it's a struggle or a submission. Okay? So, watch it. So let's look at uh, verse 10. We'll, we'll get done here. First John 1.10. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. Do we need to say this again? Didn't he just say that in verse 8? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is in not, not in us. In verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Romans 3.23, what's it say, Red? All of us. Earlier in that chapter, he's quoting Old Testament. There, 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 none is righteous. There's no, not one. It, he's just repeating it to emphasize it. We all are in that same boat, but we all have a Redeemer. Now, <laughs> I just want to say a little bit about this word is not in us. In 1 John 1.10, um, his word is not in us. Remember, that word is the word that he's talking about right at the beginning of the letter. The, the word that they have looked upon, their hands have handled, which they heard. This is the light of the world coming into darkness. This is the Savior. And according to Luke 8, verse 11, that word is a seed. The word of God is a seed that the sower seeds and it falls onto soil. That seed is in us. Unless the enemy has taken away because we're path where that seed is in us. Hopefully we aren't rocky. Hopefully we aren't weedy, but we're good soil. And when that light shines on it, what does that seed do? Grows. See, that seed grows so much that in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says in Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. You are. All you all. That you are the light of the world and that um, we should let our good deeds shine forth so that we can get patted on the back. Nope. So that... They will see our good works and glorify our Heavenly Father. See, that's our walking in the light. He's called us to walk in the path that he has set out for us. He's given us his word to be a light and a lamp, to lead and guide. And when we do that, others see and come into that light. And then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from our sins. If we walk in the light as he is in the light. So, don't forget, this word in, in us is Christ. Colossians 1.27 says, This great mystery has been revealed to you Gentiles. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The, the word is in us, shining out so that we can be the light to the world, shining out so that we can continue to walk in that light and have real, honest fellowship with God and fellowship with one another. So, 
What can we say? We all need a Savior. We need to realize it and confess it as truth. We need to believe that Jesus will forgive and cleanse us and that the light, the Word of God, lives in us through the Spirit of God. Our deeds are good. When our deeds are good, <laughs> um, we shine a light. But I'm telling you, it's a struggle. We, we, the enemy is not going to give up on you easily. You know, some, some people might even say, uh, for we wrestle not with flesh and blood. That, that we, we might even need some spiritual armor in this battle that we're fighting. If you'd like to learn more tonight at 4 o'clock, tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Okay? We, I, I just can't say how God is interweaving these two um, lessons, the, the first John um, teachings and the Ephesians chapter 6. God is going to work those to, together, uh, and uh, I think, hopefully, give us all a more and more uh, a deeper knowledge of who He is and who we are, and His love for us. That's what we want. We want our roots to grow down deep. Amen. All right. So, uh, singers, would you come sing? And uh, if you all, in our course, uh, course books, Course 65, Sanctuary. Uh, so, Les, uh, I, I'd like us to sing it twice with some music. But I, I want us to sing it the third time a cappella. Just focusing in on what this uh, little course is. This is a prayer. This course is a prayer. And, and I'm not into... Uh, Om Ambriya, Om I don't want to make sure that we are feeling the Spirit of God. But I do want us to pray this prayer. Okay? So, we'll play it twice so you get the tune. But the third time, we're just going to sing it as a prayer to God. Okay? be a place where others can meet you face to face. Let us live our lives as bright lights in this dark world. I pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are dismissed.